hey, God wants to bring his people back to himself. Let's read from Zechariah chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. I will sow them among the peoples, and they shall remember me in far countries. They shall live together with their children, and they shall return. I will also bring them back from the land of Egypt and gather them from Assyria. I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon until no more room is found for them. Well, God sowed his people among the nations, wherever they were, in Babylonian captivity and Assyrian captivity. God always sent them on, and you know what? In the captivity, they were what they were. And so they took the knowledge of the true and living God. They took it with them into captivity. Of course, there were many who went away, many who left behind God's things and were not faithful representatives, not faithful witnesses. But there were many who, who did, in, in different respects, they carried the knowledge of the true God off into these far places. And although that's a little bit indirect evangelistically, uh, God was using that. God, God is working to bring a knowledge of himself along into the nations. And he worked through his people, although they, were, they had a lot of problems along the way. God still spread the knowledge of truth through them. And it's his purpose, of course, today to continue to spread the knowledge of truth through us. Although he sent them into captivity, his people tended to prosper wherever they went. And wherever you're living God's way, even if you're living it only in part, or even if you're under harsh conditions, you will still prosper. You'll find things that prosper you. And so God's people prospered out in the captivity, even under the duress they often found themselves in. Suffering material one in distant lands, although it's probably like not the first thing on your list of things to do, God can use that anyway. He can use that to help us refocus spiritually. And he surely did that with some of his people, those who were willing and those who were ready to receive. And so he's ready to do that uh, for us no matter what circumstance we're in. Let him use the circumstances you're in to refocus your spiritually. So our work today involves bringing people back, back from materialism, back from selfishness, back from just, just, just pure, raw self-indulgence. They say there's an epidemic today of loneliness and of meaninglessness, and people are looking for something to give their life meaning. Well, maybe if I go out and do this tragic thing out there, I'll go down in history. At least they'll remember my name. You see how that works? It's, it's, it's really cold. We're really living in a cold age. Part of our work is to help people see there is meaning. There are things that matter. There are beautiful and good things in the world, not just things that are neutral and that there's no morality and it's just biggest shark and the tank wins. You know, the people all around us, they don't realize it, but really the world that we're in is, is reliving Genesis 1. In Genesis 1, God orders the world. He puts things in order. He organizes the land and the water. He puts it all in, in, into an order. He creates humans, male and female, you know, not 18,000 different genders, but two, male and female. He sets up the light and the dark and all the different pieces. He sets up the the different elements in the animal kingdom. He sets up the different elements in the plants and, and, and all the pieces around us. God orders his world, Genesis 1. But what's happening today is there's kind of a, a, a remaking of the world. We're living in Genesis 1 again, but it's kind of a, a quasi or a pseudo-Genesis 1. It's not God who's doing the things. These people who think they can reshape the world in their image, the transhumanists and the technocrats, and the government leaders are going to change everything and put in new policies and change everything, change how we live, change how we drive, change how we eat, change how we do medicine. And they're remaking the world. They're changing, you know, what's male, what's female. Oh, there's all these different kinds of... This is, is it's an attempt to do Genesis 1 all over again, but in not in God's image, making man in God's image. It's making remaking men in the image of the what the corporations and the people of wealth and influence and the people who think they're smart and think they're sharp the way they think it should be they're going to remake the world in their in their corrupt image and so yeah that's they're going to break a lot of stuff before they're done we can just kind of plan on that but but god's world still stands and so he's working to transform and to change us so our work today, part of that is helping people see there's meaning, there's value, there is goodness. Those are things we want to communicate to others. First of all, by, by being that, and by, of course, more detailed exposition from the Bible, some of the prop prophetic things that we know are coming. God will be our helper as we, as we allow him to help us. If we don't allow him to help us, man, you're on your own, and it's going to go hard. So let's let him be our helper. See you in the morning. Thank you.